Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most useful hotkeys to use in DaVinci Resolve 14. So coming in at number 10, Alt plus Shift plus a number on your keyboard or one of the F keys. When you use this key combination with a number, it's going to lock a video track corresponding with the number that you put in. So Shift Alt 1 is going to lock or unlock video track 2 whereas Shift Alt 2 is going to lock video track 2. Now if you switch over to the F keys, you're going to be locking the audio tracks instead. So Shift Alt F1 locks the audio track 1, and Shift Alt F2 locks the audio track 2. Pretty simple. This is going to be most useful when you want to prevent a track from having any changes made to it, because there may be a circumstance where you want to move around, let's say, the video of a clip, but you want to lock the audio in place. And this is a really good way to do it. Number nine, snapping. By default, this is turned on. And if you have two clips that ever come right next to each other when you're trying to set the duration of a clip or have it pop into place, it'll make sure that one clip smoothly transitions into the other clip, they don't overlap each other, and that they'll be ports side by side. Now that's usually what you want, and that's why snapping is enabled by default, but if you ever need to toggle that off, you can hit the N key on your keyboard. When snapping is off, you'll be able to move your clips completely freely. Just note that if you accidentally pull a clip over another clip and you overwrite part of it, that there's not going to be any warning, there's not going to be any user-friendly snapping anymore. But whenever you want to enable it again, just hit N on your keyboard. So if you are in the edit tab with the media pool open, or you're in the media tab in general, you can hit control I in order to quickly grab any video file from your computer, or really it can be images or audio clips as well, to bring in as a media source to use in your project. So normally you can do things like drag and drop from anywhere in Windows Explorer into DaVinci Resolve, or you could go up to the file menu, but using control I is a shortcut to be able to precisely pick out what you're looking for on your computer. Number seven, I.O. These are the hotkeys you use when you want to set endpoints and out points quickly on either a clip that you're pulling in from your media pool to use in the project and you only want to use part of that video clip, or you can use it to set spaces in the timeline. So if I add a space here with the I key by setting an endpoint, and I go up into the preview window for this clip I'm pulling in from my media pool, I can grab the clips I want with I.O. And I can specify where I want that to go inside of the timeline by having that endpoint set. And now I can drop it into its precise place by hitting insert clip or F9 on the keyboard. And it's where we want it with the exact length and duration and parts that we tried to grab out of the source video file. Number six, shift backspace for ripple delete. Now there's many ways to delete clips out of your timeline. But generally, I find that ripple deletes are really powerful because when you pull something completely out of your timeline and you use a ripple delete, it won't leave such a big gap. So by hitting shift delete on your keyboard with the clip you want to remove selected, it's going to pull everything on the right and push it to the left so that there's no gap where you remove the clip from. So the clips to the left now and the clips to the right are seamlessly smashed together and shift backspace allows you to do that with your keyboard. Number five, shift nine. If you ever wanted to know how to change things like the timeline resolution or the frames per second in your video, opening up the project settings dialog is where you would do that. Now you can do that by going into the file menu or you can get there much quicker by hitting shift nine on your keyboard. And since these settings are something you may end up needing to change on a project by project basis, being able to open it with shift nine is a handy shortcut. Number four, control C, V, and X for copy, paste, and cut respectively. So these are shortcuts that are kind of universal to almost every program, and that's because they're very, very useful if you're doing paint, if you're doing video editing, you're going to need copy, paste, and cut. So control X to cut basically pulls a clip or an audio clip into your buffer, which is your computer's active memory. And if you want to paste that back in, because your computer still knows about it, you can just hit Control-V 
So that's useful for moving things around if you don't want to drag it all over your timeline. And then if you want to duplicate a clip, you could do something like Control C to copy it and then paste it and you can paste it multiple times. So using those three tools, you can play around with the memory buffer. You can duplicate clips, you can move them around, or you could even use cut effectively as a delete where it's still temporarily in memory until you cut something else. But in any case, those three are universally useful in many software apps. Number three, B, A, and T. B is for razor, A is for selection mode, and then T is for trim edit mode. So I like to think of it as BAT if you want to give it an acronym. So these are tools that you're going to commonly be using in the timeline. And by commonly, I mean pretty much everything you do with it. So every time you want to make a cut, you use the razor tool. When you want to select and move something, you hit A to use the selection tool. And then trim edit mode when you want to, for example, um, keep the duration of a clip the same, but slightly offset what's going to be playing then you can use the trim edit mode. So being able to switch between those three tools using hotkeys is very useful because you cannot need to change them often. Number two, L for play forward. When you have your video paused, the play forward button or hotkey is going to start playing your video back at times one speed, which is fine. If you hit it a second time though, it starts playing it back at times two speed, a third time times four speed, and you can keep escalating it uh, at least to times eight speed. But what's really useful about playing your video back at a faster speed is that while you're editing, you can actually figure out where you need to make the cuts a lot faster when you're editing at times two or times four speed. Just as a worthy mention, you can do the opposite of play forward by hitting J on your keyboard, which is actually play reverse. And you can hit that a second time to play in reverse at higher speeds. And then that brings us to number one. The most useful hotkey inside of DaVinci Resolve is, in fact, this space bar, which is play or pause depending on if your video is playing or not. And of course, the reason that the play pause button is going to be so useful is that sometimes you need to be playing it so that you can figure out where you need to make the cuts, and other times you need to pause your video so that you can make those cuts and not have the timeline move forward without you. While you're actually editing your video in the edit tab, it wouldn't surprise me if you hit the space bar several times a minute alone. So I hope you found this top 10 list for the hotkeys inside of DaVinci Resolve, which are the most useful to be useful. And I will see you guys in my future video content.